So let's take a look at inputs, outputs, and operators. Now, in general, when a computer program runs, there's usually some form of input, some processing, and some form of output. For example, if we had to calculate the area of a room, we would input the length and the breadth of the room into the program. The program will use those two pieces of data and calculate the area and then output it back to us. So let's see what that will look like in code. To do this, we are going to need to take an input from the user for the length and the breadth of the room. Now we're going to use the input function, which is a built-in Python function for us to use. It comes with Python out the box. So you've seen it before in previous videos. So we're going to use it again here and we're going to prompt the user for what is the uh, length of the room. I'm going to do this again and we're going to say what is the breadth of the room. Now, if you remember from our previous video, we learned about variables. So we would want to store the answers from the user, so the input from the user, into variables so we can use it to perform the calculation. So a good name for this variable could be length, and for this one could be breadth. So we have what is the length of the room, what is the breadth of the room. So we've taken input from the user. So if we run this, it says what is the length of the room, two, what is the breadth of the room, four, and it's taken in our input. To show that uh, it has, we can output the data right back to the user by using print, which is another built-in function from Python. We've used this in the previous video as well. We can just do print length and print breadth. So let's try this again. What is the length of the room? Two, what is the breadth of the room? Four, and we get two and four. So we've taken input from the user and now we've outputted something back to him. But we don't want to output length and breadth. We want to output the result of the area or the actual area, the result of the calculation. So let's do that calculation. We can get rid of this and we can say area. Because remember, we want to take that result of the calculation, store to a variable, and then we can print it to the screen for the user. So how do we perform a calculation of area? It's length multiplied by breadth. And we can just print area, as simple as that. Okay, so let's see what happens when we run this. What is the length of the room? Two. What is the breadth of the room? Four. And we get a failure. Now, this is very interesting to note in Python. I'm sure we covered this at some stage in our uh, videos in this channel. When you take an input from a user and you want to use it for a number calculation, the problem is that this input retrieves the input as string values. Now we want it to be integer values so we can perform our calculation. So how do we do this? We can cast the result of this, so the string value, to an integer. Now this is yet another built-in function in Python, and it will convert a string to an integer. So now if we perform the calculation again by running the code and we say, what is the length of the room? Two, what is the breadth of the room? Four, and we get eight. So what we've done here we, is we've taken input from a user, we've performed some processing by converting it into integers, and we performed a calculation to determine the area, and we've outputted that result back to the user. So I would encourage you to pause the video here Take some time out, try to recreate this in your editor, take some input, uh, do some processing and uh, output something to the terminal just so you can get familiar with this before moving on to the next step of this video. Okay, so I hope you gave that a go. Now let's take a look at operators. There are different types of operators. We're going to look at mathematical, comparison and logical. So let's start with mathematical. Now you can see here we've already done this. We've used the asterisk to indicate multiplication, and we performed maths to get a result. Now, we can do addition by just doing that. And to make this easier to demonstrate, we're going to make length 4 and breadth 2. And we're just going to call this result to be a little bit clearer. So if we had to run this now, we have 4 plus 2, 6. So very simple. If we want to do subtraction, we just do minus. Very simple. 
if we want to do division or divided by two is two. Now notice it says two point something, so it'll give us the exact value. So if this has to be five, we have to run this, it'll do 2.5. So there are other operations as well. This is, there's another one called integer division. So if we had to do this and we did five divided by two, we'll get two. So it rounds down. Whatever result we get, it rounds down. So if we did four divided by two, it's still two. But if we did, let's say nine divided by two, it'll still give us a whole number. Now, lastly, we have remainder, which is performed with a percentage sign. And we can do, let's, let's start with four divided by two. And it's gonna give us zero because we're looking for the remainder. So if we did five divided by two, we'll get one. So two goes into five two times with a remainder of one. And that is all you need to know for the mathematical operators. Okay, so I hope you gave that a go. Now let's take a look at comparisons. Now, weirdly, assignment is under comparisons. We have an equal sign here that assigns this value to the length variable. So you're pretty familiar with that by now. But let's take a look at the next thing, which is equivalence. So we want to check to see if two variables are equal to each other. And if we look at length and breadth here, we have five and two. We know it's not equal, but how can our program tell us that it's not equal? So the first thing we can do is change this to be equal, equal. So what we're doing here is a comparison. We are performing some sort of comparison and it will give us a result. Now let's run this and see what we get. False, because length and breadth are not equal to five and two. Note how this is a statement and it gives us a Boolean as a result, even though we've had variables with integers here. But the Boolean comes from the statement. That's the important thing when you're comparing variables. Length is equal to breadth, true or false. And then we get the results, and then we print it out to the user. So if we did this as five and five, we'll get true, because now our statement or the comparison, length is equal to breadth. Okay, what about the opposite check. What if they are not equal? So length not equal to breadth. Is this true or false? It's false because they are both equal. And if we did six, that would be true. Okay, so that is uh, equal, not equal. We can also do greater than, just like in maths. Is length greater than breadth? No. How about we did that? It's true. We can also do greater than equal to, and we can run this again. That's true. Five true and six false. Right. And just like maths again, we can do less than. So is length less than breadth? Yes, it is. If we did four, yes, it is. And just like previously, we can do equals to or less than equals to uh, false for five and four. If it was five, great, that's true. Six, that's true again. Okay, so that is all the comparison operators. Again, take some time, give it a go in your editor, because this is the, the, I'm telling you, it is the best way to learn. Okay, so finally, we're going to take a look at the logical operators and and or. Now, and and or helps us by letting us perform multiple comparisons at once. So right here, we have length is less than equal to breadth. And if we ran that, we come back with true because it is less than. If we used the and keyword and said length um, not equal to breadth, so they aren't equal. This will still remain true. Now look, this is the comparison. Length less than equal to breadth and length not equal to breadth. So this will only return true if both comparisons come back as true. So there's a result here and a result here. When we use the and keyword, they both need to equal true. Okay? So if length less than equal to breadth, fine. How about we made this seven? 
So if 7 is, in this case we know now that 7 is greater than 6, so this check will fail, but this check will still pass. What do you think will happen? Let's run it, and it comes back with false. It comes back with false because both need to be true. We can change this to or and run it again, it comes back as true. Because now we have a comparison using the word or, and it means only one of the checks need to come back true, and then we'll get the result true. So length is less than or equal to breadth. I'm sorry, length is not less than or equal to breadth, but length is not equal to breadth, so it will return true. This might be a little bit complicated, but again, I would suggest trying this out so you can understand it. Just remember that when we're using and, both need to be true. In this case, both are not true. If we change this to five, then it's true. If we change this to or, we ran it, it's still true. And if we change it to seven, it's still true because length is not equal to breadth. So you can perform multiple. So you can do and, and do your check. You can do or, and do your check. So you can keep appending to your comparisons, but usually you don't see this as, you know, millions and millions of checks. So the most important thing here is you need to understand the difference between and, and or, and how they work when an um, the result is printed. And that is it for inputs, outputs, and operators. I hope you are now clear in your head as to what they do, what they mean. And now let's move on to the next video.